My name is Kainath Habib and I belong to District Lahore. I have uh, got my early education from uh, Imperial Public School Lahore and I have done my bachelor's from School of Architecture and Town Planning, UT Lahore. Uh, despite studying in my university life, I have also been a part of many co-curricular activities. I have served as a English Poetry and Bhatbazi lead at UT Literary Society and have had the honor of representing my university at many uh, literary competitions nationwide. Apart from that, I have also co-authored two international anthologies and their names are Amidst the Dawn, I Have Craved for the Night and Unrestricted by Reality, respectively. Furthermore, I have also worked with an NGO, a student-based NGO. I was basically a campus coordinator of that NGO in, in which we help the people located in the Kachi Abadis of our university, especially during the time of uh, urban flooding in Lahore and COVID-19. And as far as my work experience is concerned, I'm currently working as a town planner in Nest Park and my hobbies are reading and writing. What is this Nest Park? So Nest Park is basically a private company that was uh, uh, established by government of Pakistan for many infrastructural projects uh, 50 years from now. We have recently completed our uh, Golden Jubilee as well. It was basically a company meant for, really, uh, for the development projects uh, that were going on in Pakistan and uh, for their uh, smooth implementation and uh, 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 smooth work as well. We have many divisions such as infrastructure division, architecture division, planning division, and uh, 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 environmental and uh, horticulture division as well. Among your optional subject, you have uh, you have gone for philosophy and then town planning. Yes, sir. Now you tell us what is the philosophy of town planning. Sir, philosophy of town planning is quite interesting. It is uh, basically an amalgam of arts and science. It is basically uh, the science of designing, uh, the science of uh, acquiring information about the existing situation of the town and then planning a new one. And the art of inculcating the, uh, the elements such as urban landscape and architecture in them to uh, give a sense of urban aesthetics and uh, sustainability as well. If you happen to travel from Islamabad to Lahore on GT Road, and not motorway, GT Road, how you will conclude what is the status of town planning in Pakistan? So no, I, believe, in Punjab. Huh, I believe that uh, on GT Road, along GT Road, there are many satellites, satellite towns and uh, housing societies as well that have been developed. And uh, uh, within the vicinity of many uh, cities that are located or rural settlements that are located along GT Road, there are many uh, planned initiatives that have been carrying on and uh, many development work uh, <coughs> has also been carried on along GT Road. Uh, but if we talk about the infrastructure of the road itself, it's uh, quite... Uh, disturbing at some points, so we need... Uh, is it a part of the town planning? Uh, yes, sir. Transportation planning also falls in the, uh, the town planning because whenever we plan a town, whenever we plan a city or even a housing scheme, the road network is the primary thing uh, that uh, imprints on the land, first of all, and after that, the plotting or uh, anything that is going to be constructed, either they are buildings or commercial buildings, uh, they are the latest stages that are uh, done in town planning. How do you see the future of democracy in Pakistan? Sir, I believe that uh, future of democracy in Pakistan is quite hopeful because we have a heterogeneous society in which uh, the every representative uh, from every class and every uh, uh, heterogeneity is involved in parliament in decision making in legislation uh, legislation and in everything that is done in parliament. So I believe that there uh, there are some loopholes that are in our system that exist, uh, although. Every system is not uh, as smooth as it is planned to be. There are some flaws. There are some uh, drawbacks as well. So uh, by working on them and uh, by inculcating more efforts into that system, we can uh, we can hope that the future of democracy uh, would be optimistic in Pakistan. Any sound evidence or reason when you are making this statement? Say, I believe that uh, uh, whenever we talk about democracy, democracy is about the... Uh, representation of people for everyone, by everyone, and to everyone. So these three principles of democracy are served by the very electoral process and uh, very legislative process, process in our country. So I believe that these requirements that are very due requirements of democracy are being fulfilled in our state. The, the problem lies within the implementation of those legislations or those uh, laws or amendments that have been uh, proven or that have been passed in the parliament. 
So I believe that uh, um, in 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 the pro in the implementation of those legislations, if uh, there is a evident or pragmatic approach being taken into consideration, so it can be improved at a larger extent. There is a war in the Middle East. Hamas and Israel they are fighting with each other. The balance of power is changing in the Middle East. How you evaluate it? So I believe that uh, the balance of power in the uh, Middle East have been uh, deteriorating uh, in the last stages as well. If I talk about uh, Iran Iranian supremacy through uh, missiles or through nuclear technology, and if I talk about uh, Saudi Arabs, uh, uh, Saudi Arab supremacy in a sense of uh, being a, being a leader state or being a leading state of a Muslim nation, then uh, uh, these states are always been in a, comp a competition to each other. But if I talk about uh, Hamas and Israel, then there are uh, specifically two uh, superpowers that are behind them. The one is UK and the other is USA. They both have their nexus and uh, they, uh, Russia and USA, sorry. They both have their nexus and they both have their poles in the, uh, in the international politics as well. So um, by one or another militant group or any uh, the backing of the state or any diplomatic relationships, they are uh, supporting their stance. Then they are uh, following the uh, bloc that they have been follow, uh, that they have been aligned to as per their economic, political, and diplomatic needs. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Nainat, uh, who was the first uh, lady architect of Pakistan? Ma'am, uh, I'm not sure about it, but uh, I. I, I'm not sure about it. I will read about it. So, your favorite personalities are Michelle Obama, mm -hmm. Fatima Jinnah, and Jacinda Ardern. What are the common factors in these ladies that you have selected as your favorite? Ma'am, uh, there are three common uh, factors that uh, have been uh, very crucial to uh, select these personality. The one is of leadership. The other one is of uh, work and personal life balance. That is very important for a female if you are working in a in a society and you have to maintain a balance between your family life and your work life. And thirdly, uh, there is a there is a there is a notion of change in them at either it is on lower level or either it is on international level. They, these three personalities are uh, very much proponents of uh, change and uh, uh, so, social justice that is to be served in the society and which is still due. For, for example, if I talk about Michelle Obama, she has been very active uh, uh, among uh, the black uh, uh, people or uh, uh, black representatives and especially uh, about the education of women in black societies or uh, black culture. So I believe that uh, this, these three uh, parameters are very important to me that are the but most likely. Do you think life. Fatma Jinnah kept a balance in work life and home life? Uh, so, Ma'am, I believe that uh, she uh, did that in a very larger extent that she supported his brother, her brother to a very... Uh, she never married, so she didn't have a family, so there was no question of family life. It was a dedication to the movement and to her brother. Before getting married, uh, the the home of father or the home of brother is the home of a woman. After she gets married, she gets into a family life. So I believe that once you are not, you are not, if you are not married, then uh, your brother, your father, or your mother, they are your family and uh, they need your support too. So if you don't have a family after marriage, it, it's another consequence. But I believe that she supported and uh, she involved herself in political domains in very actively. Uh, that has. Uh, uh, and also her love about his brother, her brother is very, uh, very commendable in, uh, in many aspects. What were her contributions for women? Uh, she co-founded the uh, Pakistan Women uh, Forum, I believe, uh, if I'm not wrong about the name of the organization. Also, uh, she uh, worked along Rana Liaqat Ali Khan. Um, yeah, Begum Rana Liaqat Ali Khan along many projects uh, for women empowerment and well, did she work along with the Rana Liaqat work? Rana Liaqat Ali Khan along because along she along. what was her profession Fatma Jinnah's profession? Uh, she was a dentist by profession uh -huh. but uh, she was involved in politics with her brother uh, since a very but large Rana Liaqat Ali what was her profession or education? Uh, Ma'am, I'm not sure about it. I would. Uh, she was just the wife of the prime minister. She, she was the wife of the prime minister. Not nothing to talk about education. Right, <laughs> but but they both contributed uh, towards the empowerment of women in Pakistan, and they co-founded many organizations as well. So I believe that's a positive gesture if uh, uh, the social uh, responsibilities or the social 
doings of a person is concerned. So that's a positive point. Do you think Rana Ariyakatiri contributed to the betterment of women in Pakistan? Uh, yes, ma'am. I believe that she worked. Uh, for example. For example, Appa. I believe that Appa was co-founded by her, if I'm not wrong, uh, or Women Action Forum or anything. These organizations were. Women I Action Forum is a Appa. very late. Uh, it was a later movement, but Appa was uh, primarily co-founded by her. Okay. So, what are the 21 lessons for 21st century? Ma'am, there are 21 domains in this books. Uh, in this book by Yuval Noah Harari, which is basically uh, a historian or sociologist as well. He has uh, discussed many domains such as education, such as religion, uh, such as uh, democracy, such as uh, the power balance in international relations, and uh, many more domains as well. My favorite part is uh, uh, education sector. He has devised or he has segregated the, the delivery of education policies in the world um, in three premises in this book. First of, all, first of all, he talks about the international uh, institutes such as Harvard, uh, Oxford, uh, or University of London, and uh, their way of conducting things and, and their way of uh, communication in education policy. And then he talks about the, uh, the Asian countries or the level of education in Asian countries. And then he talks about and he draws an, uh, an analogy or a, a comparison between these two systems. And uh, he comes up with some common points and some disturbing points as well that uh, there are are some loopholes in, uh, in the Asian system, although uh, the, uh, the universities in developed nations are also a very good model of education, but they do uh, need some reforms as well. He also criticizes some institutions uh, in, the, in that, that, that book, which is very, uh, very uh, inspiring because nobody talks about uh, the loops holes that are uh, involved or that, ha that are associated to a brand. We will just talk about that. Uh, this is University of London. This is Oxford and this is Cambridge. So everything would be justified in this institution. But there are some loopholes. And uh, he, he draws an analogy there as well. Thank you so much, Kaina. Welcome to CSP's Academy for CSS PMS preparation. CSS PMS Tehreeri Imtihan ke tamam mazameen ki online or on campus tayari ke saath saath subject selection, assignment checking, class test, mock exam, individual teacher discussion or feedback session ka in a kaab kiya jayega. Iske alawa FPSC ki tajweez karda books se bane mayari notes aur CSP's publisher ki behtereen books mohaiya ki jayengi. Kainat, what is uh, the difference between education philosophy of Deoband and Nadwatul Ulma? Sir, uh, I'm not sure about it. But uh, I will read upon it. I, I'm not. Rec I cannot recall it uh, at this moment. आप एक सब्जेक्ट पंजाबी भी है. पंजाबी ज़बान के कितने रस्मों खाते हैं? So I believe uh, there are two रस्मों खाते of these. Uh, one is गुरमुखी and the other is uh, the Urdu script or the Sanskrit Sanskrit script. I believe. Oh, sorry, Urdu script that we Arabic script. क्या नाम बोलते हैं उसका technical नाम क्या? So I'm not sure about it. Punjabi Zaban can the Tahrike Traki Pasand Yekisne Shrupiti. If uh, we talk about the contemporary literature, then uh, Munir Niazi, I believe, was the poet who started. Uh, In the poetry of Munir Niazi, there's a lot of fear, blood, destruction. What are its reasons? That basically uh, represented the partition era or the problems that were associated uh, uh, in, in, uh, to the people of uh, lower class when they migrated from India to Pakistan. And he portrays or uh, his, uh, an image of uh, fear or contempt or anger among people, uh, among did uh, he the masses. Himself, did he himself do the migration? Well, I'm not sure about it, but I believe that he did. Uh, one of uh, your strength is that you are very creative. Yes. Uh, your weakness is that you are very overthinking. Without overthinking, a person cannot be a creative. Then how this is your so weakness? So I believe that in overthinking, there are many useless things as well that we that we think and that are not even creative as well. So if I talk about creativity, there is thinking process, there is mind game, uh, there there is something so that this mean overthinking is. Overthinking, kind of strength. overthinking is a strength to some extent. If the limits are crossed, then I think that overthinking wastes our time uh, sometimes. Thank so you. So that's my opinion. Thank you, sir.
Well, can I ask uh, you read philosophy? What is empiricism and gives an uh, example? So empiricism is basically uh, the way of acquiring knowledge through senses or everything that we see in our domain. And uh, if I talk about empiricist philosopher, then uh, as far as my knowledge, is, knowledge uh, my mm. limited knowledge, there are two uh, philosophers that I remember at this time. One is Berkeley, I believe, and the other one is uh, John Locke, if I'm not wrong. What is the contribution of Kant in philosophy? So, uh, Kant has given the idea of uh, transcendental idealism. He talks about religion, he talks about the debates of, uh, of faith or he talks about uh, many things that are associated to acquiring knowledge or, or the, uh, the existence of an idea in this universe. And he gives an, an image that there always exists a, a transcendentality or uh, uh, a confusion. In, in religion as well, in uh, in acquiring knowledge through different uh, ideas as well. So there should be a concrete or he basically tried to uh, amalgamate uh, immaterialism and uh, idealism. So that was the core philosophy of Kant. What did you know about the cave allegory? The cave alleg uh, allegory was given by Plato and uh, in that allegory there were uh, many signs. Okay. Who propounded a uh, philosophy of anarchism and what is this? Sir, I'm not sure about the philosopher, but uh, I believe that uh, if you allow me to take a guess, yeah. uh, it was given by Mac, uh, Hegel or anything. Okay, what is major the difference between Leninism and Marxism? Uh, sir, Leninism was primarily practiced in Russia, uh, uh, and uh, Marxism is uh, is an ideal ideology. It, uh, Leninism is basically a socialist ideology. And Marxism is basically basically communism, communist ideology in which there is a classless, stateless society and there is a rule of uh, working class or we can, uh, if we say bourgeoisie society. You mean there is no difference between Marxism and communism? Yeah, I believe there is. You no. believe this? Yes, sir. You must check it. Okay, yeah, how do you think Rousseau's political philosophy contributed toward the making of U.S. Constitution? Rousseau's. Sir, uh, uh, Rousseau's philosophy was of a uh, social contract. And I believe that uh, after his uh, uh, his proposition of a general will or uh, uh, individual uh, general will, I believe uh, they uh, proposed a bill of rights in U.S. Constitution and uh, from bill of rights. Uh, Do you think uh, there is any contribution of John Locke toward the making of 1973 Constitution of Pakistan? Uh, sir, I believe that he has. Uh, How? Sir, he has uh, been a very strong proponent of individual liberty of individuals and as well as the general will of the people as far as they, they are concerned. So, uh, in 1973 constitution, there is parliamentary system and uh, there is the representation of people through elections at a very uh, lower state or lower state of the people and the people that are uh, sitting in the provincial or uh, 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 national assemblies, they are the representatives of those people that have elected them. Okay, you see uh, how... Uh what is the relation between Kaidasm's 14 points uh, toward the making of first sort of constitution, nine, Government of India Act 1935? How 14 points contributed toward so that? 14 points of Jinnah were basically a reply to uh, Gandhi's points and uh, in which he basically ruled out Muslims to from every domain or every uh, uh, the principles in which uh, uh, the, Muslim, the Muslims should be taken uh, into consideration. So Jinnah prom uh, promulgated a policy or uh, those points were basically the narrative of the people of subcontinent or the Muslims of subcontinent that should be taken into consideration at a very, uh, very immediate extent. So I believe that uh, these... Uh, okay, my last question is from your degree sorry. related. Uh, what is the major difference in town planning in Indus Valley Civilization and Gandhara Civilization? Then in Indus Valley Civilization, the, the town were planned uh, in a way that uh, there was a center of the town that was known as Citadel and Citadel... citadel Go for Harappa. There was a Citadel in Harappa? Uh, yes sir, there was a Citadel in Harappa. I'm not talking about uh, Mujadur. I'm talking about Harappa. Uh, no sir, in Harappa there was not a Citadel. Citadel is basically a place that is 4 to 5 feet above so the you ground. You are saying level. that there was a central idea. Sir, there, there was... was he said there was a central uh, a central business district, you can say that, of that city, but that was not located at higher uh, level. For Citadel, we have a restriction that Citadel should be located at a higher uh, uh, slope. Uh, it should be four to five feet above, uh, talk, talking about technically. So in Harappa, there was no such thing. There was uh, just uh, fencing of uh, 
uh, the city or the core city in which the business or activities or the warehouses were located or the hammams were located. So that was. And in Gandhara? So in Gandhara civilization, uh, I need to revise that. I have learned uh, and uh, in my degree and my optional as well. So I will read upon that. Gandhara civilization, jo hai, wahan pe town planning, jo kis empire se inspired ki gayi thi? You know that? No, sir, I don't know that. I'll read upon that. Persian empire. Thank you for it. Okay, now let's conclude this uh, formal interview. Let's have informal. You see, this is a practice interview. Now we are giving you a sort of a practice mock interview. You are going to face the interview there in the house. Okay, that is the objective. Now here, uh, because of the different questions which has been raised by the panel. <coughs> We gather that you have got a good personality, you are intelligent, your communication skills are good, you are confident, posture, setting posture is fine, uh, you create a voice impact or dress code is okay. But there are certain observations that I will tell you that number one is that the subject is town planning. You must try to understand it a little bit more. Yes, when I raise the question Islamabad to Lahore, so I'm talking about GT Road. So GT Road pe the sare town planner to hai nahi, wo to hai. Yes, so your right. conceptual understanding should be very clear that uh, town planning jo hai na, towns ke liye hoti hai, to ye to ribbon growth humare uh, mulk mein ho rahi hai. Yes. Second ye hai ki apna jo introduction hai, isko aap one pager banao, ek minute mein deliver karna hai aur isme objectivity hoti hai. Subjectivity is not one pager. This is a job interview. Yes. So, isko thoda sa recast kare. Theek hai? Regular newspaper ki reading karo. Pichle ek kamz ke ek mahine ke koi aayi ka khubar utha ke uski main national news, international and then social event jo bhi hai waha. Yes. To unko thoda sa update karo. To you are you maintaining a notebook on interview or not? Ye ek notebook ke interview pe aap. Yes, sir, I am maintaining that. So, I just started a few days back. Yes, so, this is a short topic. This is a PowerPoint presentation. Right. This is a topic. Ka naam likho, one, two, three, four point. Changing balance of power in Middle East. Pe, as a one, two, three, four point. Yes, US China relation. Pe, one, two, three point. Pe. Role of Iran in the Middle East. Pe, one, two, three, four point. So, this is a little bit. And it is a rehearsal on a daily basis. So, when the interview? Uh, sir, by the end of November, I guess I've got time. Chalo, you have got time. So, come as come to my current topic. So, right. daily basis, pain ko rehearsal karo. Taki when you speak, you speak with points. Aapne wo ek, do, teen, char points throw karne hai. Theek hai na? Taki you should make up your uh, point of view clear. Ho. Right. Theek hai na? Yeah. Madam, aap. Uh, Tanat, you're a smart girl. Uh, you have good communication skills. But I sense uh, you don't carry through your logic and then you get stuck and then you start becoming a little, you know, on the defensive. Okay. Uh, you should think through your answers. This is not DB. No, So, isko cut it down. One personality, which is thorough knowledge. Okay. क्योंकि जब आप तीन के करेंगे तो फिर जिस तरह मैंने पूछा पैनलिस्ट आपसे पूछेंगे कि इनमें क्या है और इनमें कॉमनलिटीज बहुत कम है क्योंकि मिशेल ओबामा इज वाइफ ऑफ द प्रेसिडेंट शी इज नॉट द प्रेसिडेंट आर्डन वाज द लीडर हरसेल्फ फातिमा जिना वाज अ लीडर इन हर ओन राइट आल्सो सो वो पैकेजिंग सही नहीं बनती है चाहे फातिमा जी जो भी लिखो इनमें से और उस पे फिर थोरो नॉलेज हो उसको फिर तुम डिफेंड कर सको ठीक है दैट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ऑफन आई हैव सीन कि आपने जितने भी जवाब दिए यू स्टार्ट ऑफ फाइन बट देन यू गेट एम्ब्रॉयल्ड इन योर ओन लॉजिक देन यू कांट कैरी इट फॉरवर्ड सो जब कोई सवाल पूछा जाए जस्ट टेक अ पॉज and think it through कि ये क्या पूछना चाह रहे हैं जैसे इन्होंने आपको road का पूछना चाह रहे थे पर उससे बात नहीं की you have to analyze कि what is it that the panelist is interested in ठीक है 
तो गिव योर सेल्फ सम टाइम यू कैन डू इट ऑर्गेनाइज योर थाट्स एंड देन गिव योर आंसर ठीक है और जनरल नॉलेज जो है ये करेंट अफेयर्स क्या हो रहा है आज कल उस पर डू प्रैक्टिस अलॉट आई विश यू ऑल द बेस्ट कैनात जनरल क्वेश्चन आपने बहुत अच्छे जवाब दिए हैं लेकिन जब मैम ने बताया टेक्निकल क्वेश्चन आता है ना तो शायद आपका नॉलेज कैप है ये बहुत ज़्यादा आपसे पूछेंगे पाकिस्तान अफेयर पूछेंगे आपके ऑप्शन पूछेंगे कंपल्सरी पूछेंगे जैसे फ़िलासफी से पूछेंगे पंजाबी लिटरेचर से पूछेंगे और ख़ास तौर पर पाकिस्तान अफेयर और जो आपके ऑप्शनल हैं ना इनको बहुत अच्छा तैयार कर लो यू आर वेरी टैलेंटेड और आप में पोटेंशियल है कि यू कैन गेट वेरी वेरी गुड मार्क्स एस वेल पाकिस्तान अफेयर्स एक ऐसे जो एक बड़ा सबका ही फेवरेट सा टॉपिक होता है पैनल का उससे रिलेटेड चीज़ें बहुत ज़्यादा क्वेश्चन करेंगे और आपने जो चीज़ों को ना रिलेट करना नहीं आता आपको ठीक है और बाकी आपके आपने मुश्किल क्वेश्चंस के भी आंसर किए सो दैट इज माई सेड यू आर वेरी पोटेंशियल कैंडिडेट थोड़ा सा आप पॉलिश करेंगे तो आपका जो फाइनल इंटरव्यू होगा ना वो बहुत अच्छा होगा बेस्ट ऑफ लक